than humor? Okay, when you're talking to someone who disagrees, sometimes you're like shaking and your heart's pounding and your mind's racing because, oh my gosh, this person's about to hit me in the face, aren't they? Oh no, what's gonna happen? What's the worst that's gonna happen? They're gonna hate me. Okay, well, probably not. Probably not gonna be as bad as you think. Take a deep breath. The more relaxed you are, the more relaxed they're going to be, and it's going to help the conversation. If you can use humor in a conversation, it also really helps. Any kind of joke, if you can make them laugh, it's going to make you guys seem like you're just two friends chatting it up about something really controversial. So, you know, that's really going to help. And we're going to talk a little bit more about um, all these points in a second. But when I'm talking to someone about abortion, I really take into consideration that there's a very high chance that they know someone who's had an abortion, possibly they've had an abortion themselves, their mother's had an abortion, someone. And so if we have that in the back of our minds that this is something that's really common nowadays and they've probably been affected by it, it will help your tone. It'll help it to be more empathetic and you're not gonna be as quick to let that anger about abortion come out on that other person because it's really not their fault, right? And if we had been in different situations growing up, if we had um, heard different things, seen different things than we've seen now, we might have a different perspective. And so, you know, if that other person was you, how would you want to be respected and treated in that conversation? So um, I'm going to invite my friend Chloe to come up here. Um, Chloe's also with Students for Life, and she's actually the Pregnant on Campus Chair. She does a wonderful job advocating for women on campus. And she's going to tell a little story about when we were actually on the diag with the picture I had shown earlier with the table, we were at the event like that and um, we had a conversation. Thanks, Rachel. Um, so it was the first day that we were doing the Equal Rights Institute outreach and I was super nervous. I had never done anything um, like this before with the dialogue and the apologetics. I didn't, I was really nervous that I was going to make someone more pro-choice by my terrible arguments. So, um, so one of the conversations that I really remember, um, I was talking to this guy and he was kind of, um, his arguments were mostly like, who are we to say what a woman can and can't do with her body? If she's in a really difficult position, she should be able to have an abortion because otherwise her life might suffer and her life might be a lot more difficult. And I was making the arguments, I was talking um, about the stuff that I had learned from the outreach from um, Josh Brown teaching us dialogue tips and he didn't really seem to be hearing what I was saying and in fact he started to get a little bit angry and he was, he was reacting almost like hostily and he was getting very very passionate about what he was saying even though he was saying like the same thing kind of over and over again like that like it's the woman's choice. And I was kind of like super lost. I did not know what to do. So I glanced over at Rachel and I was like, help, help. I just melted help. <laughs> and um, Rachel came over to save the day, of course. And the first thing uh, that she said to this guy was, do you know someone who's had an experience with abortion? And he said, yes, my mother had an abortion. And I was like, oh, that makes so much sense. He was getting so angry at me, and I, I thought, I, I didn't know why he was angry. I didn't know how to, how to talk to him to make him calm down and to make him understand what I was saying. And I realized he has this very, very personal connection with a woman who's had abortion, his mother. So obviously, he's going to be defending her, and he's going to, to, to get passionate about that because it's his mother. Um, so that conversation just made me think, it's not a script that we're trying to follow with people. Not everyone is going to be convinced by taking these steps in your argument. Um, you have to talk to people like they're people. They're not pro-choice robots. You have to listen to what they're saying and not just listen, but hear what they're saying. Hear in their voice when you can, you can tell someone that they know has an experience with abortion. There's a reason why they are pro-choice, why they are advocating for abortion right now. Um, and if you can hear that and understand that, that makes you a lot more, a lot easier to talk to and it makes it a lot more effective of a conversation. Um, 
So you have to remember to, to tune, your, tune your discussion and your dialogue tactics so that they reflect what that person has experienced and what that person is actually saying. Thank you so much, Chloe. Yeah, I just remember like her look of 911 help was super funny, and I was like, okay, because I was actually watching this conversation, and I knew exactly what was going on, but I wanted her to be able to like have the conversation herself, right? A lot of times it's really hard to like walk up in the middle of a conversation and be like, did your mom have an abortion? No, you don't want to do that. Like, no. Um, but once I did say that, and he said, yeah, my mom had an abortion, what was the next thing I said? I said, is she okay? Has she ever talked to you about it? You know, then we took the conversation, okay, like, let's actually give this person what they need. Like, has he ever talked about his mom having an abortion to anyone else in his life? I don't know that. I don't know if he has or has not. So I'm going to give him that opportunity. And then I don't remember exactly how the conversation went after we had talked about his mother. I think we said a couple more things, and then he had to, like, go to class. 